Hello again. Just a little recap. We are reading Jerry Spinelli's The Library Card, and we've met two characters named Mongoose and Weasel. And we are first introduced to them as they are stealing candy and pastries from a mini mart. And then as they go out and start painting graffiti all over the neighborhood. So quite interesting, not what we usually expect from children's stories, but gives us a lot to think about. The other thing that has entered the story is the library card. It has made several appearances and it's leaving us with some questions. So let us continue. Chapter five. Mrs. Bacopson stood tall and stern before the blackboard saying, I don't like to get into this kind of thing in school, but this time I can't help it. You all saw the vandalism on the way to school today. I hope none of you ever disgraces yourself with such conduct. If any of you ever feels the urge to write your name, you come see me. She held up a piece of chalk. I'll let you write all day on this blackboard here. The class laughed. Mongoose heard me weasel mutter, ain't no vandalism. Mrs. Pocopson turned sharply. You say something, Robert? Weasel glared at the teacher. No. Mrs. Pocopson kept staring Weasel down until he turned away. Anyway, she said breezily, I know at least one of the vandals wasn't my student. How do you know, Mrs. P? Someone called out. Because the dumb vandal didn't know how to spell Weasel. The class roared with laughter, except one. After school, Mongoose and Weasel strolled about town, reviewing their handiwork of the night before. Like seeing your name on a movie sign or in headlines, thought Mongoose. He felt taller. Truly, the town was theirs. What now, he said. Hit Minnie Mart again, said Weasel. Get more paint. Know where my name's going? Where? There. They were walking downtown. Mongoose looked up. Weasel was pointing to the clock tower on the First National Bank. Mongoose laughed. No, you ain't. Weasel shoved him. Ain't I? He ran to the door of the bank and tried to get in, but the bank was closed. He went next door to the luncheonette. He popped his head in and shouted, I'm doing it! They took off laughing, racing down Main. Look, yelled Weasel. He leaped into the street and waved his arms wildly. Firebird! A firebird, red ragtop, sped by. Weasel yelled after it, That's my car! The firebird beeped. The two pals ran on laughing. Life was great. The boys split and Weasel went home. Mongoose decided to wander a bit. He checked out every tree trunk he came to, looking for another one of those bugs. In time, he found himself in front of the library. Ooh. He had passed the library many times in his life, hundreds, but he had never gone inside. He was not even sure it was for kids. He pulled the blue card from his pocket. He had put it there after picking it up from the floor that morning. For the first time, he took a good look at it. One side was blank. The other side was blank, too. He kept looking it over and over. He could have sworn it said library card when he had looked at it on the roof. It was just blue. Blank scrap of paper. And yet, still, somehow he knew it was a library card. Probably was. He wasn't sure how it worked. He thought maybe it was like a ticket, giving the holder admittance as to a baseball game. Finding no ticket taker at the door, he entered. Walking up three steps, turned a corner, and found himself facing a counter with a lady behind it. When the lady looked up and saw him coming, she smiled as if she knew him. Was he supposed to know her? He walked up to the counter and showed her the card. He felt silly showing a blank card. You collecting tickets, he said. She took the card, she looked at it, then into his eyes. The silly feeling vanished. No, she said, this is not to let you in. It's to let a book out. She reached across the counter and slid the card into his coat pocket. Now, how may I help you? Mongoose told the lady about the big bug. She nodded and went away for a minute. She returned with a book. You'll find what you need in here, she said. 
She handed him the book. She smiled. Good reading. As he left the library, he stuck the book under his coat and in his waistband. He sprinted home. Only behind the closed door of his room did he take out the book. It was called I Wonder. He found what he wanted on page 23. The big bug was called Cicada, also 17-year locust. Mongoose read on. He learned that this cicada bug comes down from the tree as a baby worm and buries itself in the ground for 17 years. And then it comes out, presto. It's a big bug that sheds its skin, eyes and all, and that's what Mongoose had found. Amazing. Imagine being in the dark, underground, for 17 years. And when you come out, you're different than when you went in. Then you crawl out of your own skin. The whole idea boggled him, made him tingly. He looked at his arm. He had goosebumps. The chair he sat on no longer felt safe. He moved to the floor, his back against the wall. He started paging back to the start of the book. He knew books should be read from beginning to end, but he kept getting ambushed. Pictures and words and numbers drew his eyeballs to them like flies to flypaper. He read about a bird that stays in the air for up to four years, and a fish that climbs trees, and another bird that fights its enemies by vomiting on them, and a girl called and a bird called the tick bird that hitches a ride on the back of a rhino. And an insect, none other than the common old cockroach, that can walk around for two weeks with its head cut off. And an eel that's electric and can turn on a light bulb. And the mole rat, the book called it the world's ugliest animal, and it was right. He had to spend an hour on the picture of the mole rat alone. And a worm that can stretch itself up to 90 feet. Mongo slid full body to the floor. The ceiling was spinning. He was woozy. His mother came in. She frowned down at him. How long have you been in here? Don't know, said Mongoose truthfully. You know, you missed dinner four hours ago. You know it's nine o'clock. You know there's a fish that climbs trees? Mrs. Hill looked down on her son, on his back, on the floor, eyes closed. A look on his face she cannot recall ever seeing before, and a book in his hand. About tree-climbing fish she knew nothing, but she did know that if there was such a thing, it surely was not as rare as the sight of her youngest son holding a book and missing a meal. Just letting you know, she said, the chef's off duty. If you get hungry, make yourself a sandwich. He made a sound. She wasn't sure what it meant. Carefully, she closed the door. Hmm. <laughs> Now it's chapter six. Yo, Goose! Say, Wheaties, what's up? Not much. They're going to school a week later, being cool, being 12. And Mongoose had just lied. A lot was up. So much was up, he was practically twitching. He had finally made his way to the front of I Wonder. He had tried numerous times to read it straight through, but he just couldn't do it. He kept skipping ahead, skipping back, jumping all over the place. Same problem he had with the banana split. Each of its many parts was so tempting, he barely nimbled at one before being lured away by another. Different, though, because when he finished a split, he was stuffed, like he'd never eat again. With this book, he could wolf it down at breakfast and be ready for more before lunchtime. Wherever I wonder was going, it wasn't to his stomach. Another difference. Banana splits made mongoose greedy. No grizzly bear ever guarded her cubs more ferociously than Jamie Mongoose Hill guarded a split. But with this book, appetite seemed to move in more than one direction. His hunger was to feed not only himself, but someone else, to both give, to both take and give to share, which is what he did all week to his mother and father and older brother, till they were stuffed. But Weasel, he wasn't biting. And now, on this bright, cold December morning, Mongoose had reached the end of his patience. Right there on the sidewalk, he grabbed his best pal's arm and said, Wheeze, listen to this. Weasel frowned. You were goofy. Mongoose felt goofy. You ain't gonna believe this. You ain't gonna believe how bad I'm gonna slug you if you don't let go of my arm. Weasel pried the hand away. You know the bug on that tree that night that I mashed? Yeah, well, 
That wasn't the bug, really. That was just the shell of it that it crawled out of. And that ain't all. The bug is called a cicada. It's also called a 17-year locust, and it's called that because it lives in the ground for 17 years. 17 years, and that ain't all. When it went into the ground, it wasn't a big bug. It was just some tiny worm. Weasel looked at Mongoose without expression. Mongoose looked at Weasel, waiting for him to say something. He didn't. So Mongoose said, want to hear some more? Weasel said, I'm taking the day off. Mongoose said, there's a fish that climbs trees, Weasel, Weasel said, going to sleep in. And an anteater eats 30,000 ants a day. Maybe poke my head out the window. 30,000! Laugh at all the baboons going to school. They turned the last corner smack into the blinding sun. Weasel grabbed Mongoose's sleeve and pulled him to a halt. He moved in front of Mongoose until his face eclipsed the sun. You with me? Mongoose blinked. And there's a bug that stinks like a skunk. They walked into school. All day long, Mongoose waited for his chance alone with Mrs. Pocopson, but it never came. At dismissal in the hallway, he said to Weasel, Hey, I forgot something. Go ahead. I'll meet you outside. Mrs. Pocopson was erasing the blackboard. Mongoose stood at the doorway. He could not think of how to get started, so he just, just jumped right in. There's a fish that climbs trees and a worm that stretches itself up to 90 feet and a hummingbird, hummingbirds breathe 250 times a minute and I found a cicada shell. The eraser stopped on the blackboard. The teacher's head turned slowly. The look she gave him was as blank as weasels, yet Mongoose was sure she had heard what he said and was working on it. Suddenly, her face broke into a smile warmer and in its way more blinding than the minding morning sun. He turned and ran. <laughs> We're going to stop right there. And there will be questions about these two chapters that I want you to take a look at and answer. Okay, thank you.